have gotten to see this live before, uh, before flight, uh, before flight four. four yeah. <laughs> um, and as Kate mentioned, it's getting uh, a little more red, as you can see there on your screen. That means that heat is building up, but that's exactly what these heat shield tiles are there for is to protect against this plasma and this really, really extreme heat that the vehicle is going to see for the, about the next, uh, 10, 10 more minutes or so. Yeah, so uh, the ship will attempt to light the three center Raptor engines, uh, and those are the engines that can gimbal or maneuver or point, and they do that to help flip the ship um, until the engines point down so that it can land using the Raptor's thrust in the ocean. So that will happen after we get through this re-entry period. Um, again, now starting to see, and we also might start to see the flaps actuate a little bit here um, as the vehicle controls its roll uh, during re-entry. That was one of the main learning points from Flight 3 was the roll control. Uh, didn't work quite as well as we wanted it to. We <laughs> learned that we needed some redundancies. So we added more roll control thrusters and we'll see those in action as well today um, as that was a Flight 3 learning that worked better on Flight 4 and still enabling that same design today. Yeah. Starship has passed through 85 kilometers altitude. Flaps now have control of the vehicle. Great call out, as Kate mentioned, the flaps are controlling the attitude of the vehicle. And I love these views because it looks so calm. Uh, everything is relative, right? So relative to this camera on the ship, it looks so calm and smooth, but the vehicle is traveling extremely fast. You can see the speed on the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Starship is designed to land on Mars where there are no runways or other humans to help out. So we also want rapid reusability. So we're doing propulsive landing instead of a more traditional means like parachutes. Um, and so we will use the engines on this vehicle to help slow the vehicle down for a vertical landing. Yeah. Now, entry is going to basically happen in five phases. The first is low drag, that lasts for about three minutes. Next is high heating, and that begin that beginning when heating increases um, uh, above the uh, heat rate breakup limit. Um, that lasts for about 10 minutes. We then have high dynamic pressure. Um, Starship will continue to slow down and experience increased aerodynamic loads during that phase. Uh, and that will happen before reaching Mach 1, about a minute after. Starship is approaching the peak heating phase of entry, remains on a nominal trajectory. Okay, so that was phase two that he just called out um, that I was mentioning. After peak heating is that dynamic pressure around Mach 1, and that will uh, last about a minute after leaving the hypersonic area. And then we go into subsonic, and then of course, landing burn. Wow, what an incredible view. <sighs> The colors are so amazing, and the colors actually also tell you a little bit about the temperature that the vehicle is seeing as well. So I think that's pretty cool that we get this amazing live visual. A live, speaking of live visual, <laughs> the flap, uh, we have more flaps will stay more intact than they did last time. We did make some changes to the design in order to help enable Starship this. Starship is now experiencing peak heating, remains on a nominal entry trajectory. Great news there that Starship is continuing along the path that we intended it to fly. You can keep track with how fast it's going and how high it is above Earth using the display that is there on the bottom right hand side of your screen. And guys, this is this is where we're really gonna see a lot of those improvements from Flight 4 really come into action is so you guys kind of talked about so it's called the static arrow those are kind of the poke out points on the flaps those get exposed to some pretty extreme heat environments and so we added some additional basically made it a lot more robust for the thermal protection there and we we learned not just from visuals and stuff like that we had those missing tile tests on flight four where we intentionally left some out kept in some backup layers they're called ablatives which means they just gradually melt away to help dissipate the heat and we've got an entire layer of ablative underneath the tiles on this on this starship today so even if you get a gap in a tile or a tile is broken anything like that we've got essentially backup options and what we're really trying to do today is do an on-target landing as we lost 
the flaps, you lose a lot of your control. And so we didn't land right on target last flight. This time we're, we're trying to really nail the target uh, within just tens of meters. Um, and that'll just be a really huge step on feeling like we're closer to bringing a ship back. Um, obviously there, there's a lot of work before we get there, but we just caught a booster. <laughs> we're going to start looking real soon at when we can catch a ship. So the view on your left is as a helicopter passes by Dan, bound at Starbase. <laughs> um, the view on your left is a camera that's positioned near the nose of, star, of, of the ship, looking basically down toward the flap. Um, the view on the right is looking perpendicular to the flap. So we're looking basically bird's eye view onto the flap on the left-hand side, and then a worm's eye view uh, from the side with that view on the right. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Maverick just buzzed the tower. <laughs> he might be he might be coming back. So. <laughs> now these views uh, brought to us by Starlink. It's incredible that we have this high definition capability. In fact, that view on the left. Starship is now halfway through the peak heating phase of entry. Remains on a good trajectory. Uh, so great news there, hearing that we're about halfway through the uh, the peak heating phase, like I said um, uh, earlier, this lasts uh, roughly 10-ish minutes. Um, and we did hear earlier that the flaps have control of the vehicle, so also good news there. Um, you know, it is incredible that we've basically had views the entire time. Right, yeah, <laughs> thanks to Sterling. <laughs> my memory did black out a little bit after booster catch, so I think we had views. Uh, but, you know, all through the coast phase, we had some beautiful views of, of planet Earth behind the ship as it was in its orbit. Yeah, yeah. and I, I also do want to point out on your right hand screen, we've got a, a more encompassed view of the flap. Um, as we watched in, in flight four, the hinge area was the area where we got a little bit of that burn through. This view, this new camera view. More than, or is traveling twice the speed of sound. So we will then, the next call out that we'll hear is that it is, uh, you know, traveling about the speed of sound. And then we will hear a call out that it is, that will be the call out that it, it is transonic. And then we will hear another call out saying that it is subsonic, meaning going slower than the speed of sound. Starship is transonic. There it is. So at this so at this point in time, uh, we say transonic because certain parts of the vehicle, like the flap that you see on your screen, uh, might be experiencing airflow faster than the speed of sound, <laughs> while other parts of the ship may be experiencing airflow. Starship is in the subsonic belly flop. All right, so now the entire vehicle is traveling slower than the speed of sound, so <laughs> subsonic. The crowd here at Mission Control Hawthorne also getting excited, just like us. We're awaiting uh, a water landing. We are going to reignite the three engines to perform that flip maneuver. And we're basically uh, about a minute and a half, wow, away from the landing flip. <laughs> Yeah, the, the crowd's getting excited here as we get closer and closer to splashdown. Again, just about a minute away from the expected splashdown. So we should see a lot happening um, coming up here shortly. We're currently having a view of one of the flaps um, and it is a little bit dark on your screen, but hopefully we'll get some good views of the ship as it makes that flip maneuver and uh, touchdown for splashdown. Yeah, the uh... yeah, guys, we we saw that we saw that speed drop like a rock. So we're basically we're doing a belly flip right now or a belly flop right now. That's what's kind of if you saw the high altitude campaign, that's the unique thing about how Starship comes back. So. We've bled off pretty much all of the speed we're going to. We're essentially at terminal velocity. Starship is at five uh, times altitude. Then, remains on target. Five, five to go. Coming up soon. Landing burn. Two kilometers away. Starship is on target. Approaching landing burn startup. So keep an eye on the bottom right hand side of your screen as well. That will be the indicator when the Raptor engines ignite. 
if we are unable to see that illumination ourselves. Landing bird start up. <laughs> what a cool view of the reflection of that landing bird. An incredible view. I think it is safe to say we have a ship in the water. <laughs> Touchdown! That wow. is a life in the ocean surface. <laughs> what an incredible end to Starship's journey. A live view from a buoy that we had out at the landing zone. An incredible view of a ship. Landing just about on target as they were calling out. That was amazing. <laughs> and we did we were not intending to recover any of the ship's hardware, so that was the, the best ending that we could have hoped for. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be able to get a, a ton of extra video of the heat shield, but we hit the target. We hit the target. Yeah. I mean, you know we hit the target because we had these buoys placed in a pretty specific spot. So, wow. Um, what a day. I feel like that's, all, that's, that's what I get to say. What a day. Um, I mean, every, everything.